host here. Am I the co-host here? Yes, you're the co-host now, please go ahead. Right, thank you so much. Good afternoon, um, everyone. I'm extremely sorry um, that we are a bit um, delayed because of um, technical issues um, today. Um, hope you guys are all doing fine. Um, good afternoon, dignitaries. Good afternoon, guest speakers. Um, today, um, I'll be talking about how to utilize spiritual resources through spiritual intelligence. Just one minute, please. Okay. Stop sharing that. I can't be okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, sorry about the delay. I hope everyone is doing fine. Um, I'm Dr. Augusta Elizabeth Cromer. Um, today we are going to discuss about um, spiritual intelligence um, in a more um, professional manner, as well with um, Prophet Emmanuel, all the way um, from South Africa. Um, I'm just going to share my screen as well, so we can start this. How to utilize spiritual resources through spiritual intelligence. So I'll start with an um, introduction. Um, Nurturing and developing your spirituality uh, may be just as important as eating a healthy diet, exercising and building strong relationships, taking the time to connect with what you find meaningful in life and returning to life's big questions can enhance your own sense of connection with something larger than yourself. So what do we mean by spiritual resources? Today, we are going to discuss about spiritual resources. Spiritual resources are practices, beliefs, objects, and or relationships that, that, that people often turn to for help in times of crisis or concern. Some spiritual resources including music, prayer, Meditation, family and friends, religious leaders, priests, the rabbi, the imam, supportive communities, the church, the synagogue, and other support groups, holy writings, scriptures, Bible, um, the Torah, the, um, the Quran, um, um, inspirational writing, the poetry, um, devotional materials, prayer book, religion um, specific items. Furthermore, the fruit of the spirit will flow from your life as he's, as he's unleashed by faith. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are the fruit bearing consequently of the Holy Spirit's control. What he does is ripe, wandering, and appealing to the eyes and tasteful to the tongue. Your relationship with your heavenly father is not complete with your empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we have um, spiritual gifts as well. So what are the spiritual gifts? Spiritual gifts are different from our natural abilities, our personal traits, the fruit of the spirit that I've just said. Um, they are special ab abilities that God um, gives individuals to serve others, particularly in the church or the mosque or things like that. So ask someone to read um, 1 Peter 4, 10, verse 11 which says God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them 
well to serve one another. Do you have the gifts of speaking? Some of you might have the gifts of speaking. So then speak as though God himself, we are speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So what are the resources? You have the Sabbath monarch, you have the rosary beads from the Catholic church. You have the devotional um, pictures, prayer, rub, sacrament, practice, communion, anointing. These resources can help people return to a sense of balance where their lives have been turned upside down. They can also help people sort out the big question in order to find meaning, comfort, hope, goodness, and community in the midst of a crisis. You need wisdom. He provides good judgment. You need understanding. He provides discernment. You need counsel. He provides advice. You need power. He provides strength. You need knowledge. He provides information. You need the fear of God. He provides holy all. However, resources without reception are without results. So how do you develop your spiritual resources? Um, I'll start with cultivate empathy and compassion. Empathy um, is the ability and willingness to fully understand another person's experience and connect to its own, for example. Rather than seeing an um, irritable coworker as a nuisance, you may recognize that they are reaching to stress in the workplace. Compassion is the practice responsible of responding to the realization with kindness because you understand why the coworker is in a bad mood. You respond with extra patience and listen deeply when they complain rather than snapping back. So um, the second one is you identify and live by your beliefs and values. Making lists of your beliefs, values will help you live with intention. The list will fluid. So recognize that it's natural to shift and revise your values through, throughout life. Some of the questions you may ask yourself, discovering um, your calling, what matters to me? What drives my actions? What do I believe is right? The third one, is find a spiritual community and friends. Find a spiritual community and friends. Join a spiritual group, whether um, that is a church or a mosque or meditation center, a yoga, a class or a local group that meets to discuss spiritual issues. The benefits of social support are well documented and having a spiritual community to turn to for fellowship can provide a sense of belonging and support. The fourth one is practice forgiveness. But that's a big word, practice forgiveness. Letting go of blame is not easy, but the reward of relinquishing negative feeling are plenty to practice forgiveness Stanford Forgiveness Project Director Fred Luskin suggests finding the right perspective, passing out whether your feelings are coming from the actual experience of someone wrongling you, or whether your anger is intensifying as you relash the situation. See how those feelings are affecting you and let go of what is not helpful. Be gentle to yourself as well. You do not have to re-establish contacts with the person who wronged you in order to forgive. As Luskin says, um, forgiveness is for you and no one else. So always bear in mind that forgiveness is for you and no one else. And the fifth one is seek transcendence through nature, art, music, 
spend time outside. It's wonderful. You know, God has created us, you know, with this, um, all this nat natural product out there, you know, spend time outside, you know, nature, feeling a connected um, to nature has been linked to disease stress, better connection. You know, we, you know, nature, we have the green rays, we have, you know, there's so much to look, you know, out there for connection with other people and a heightened sense of purpose and oneness with the world. Take a leisurely walk outside alone or with friends or walk in the garden, sucking in the details, the expansiveness of the sky, the wind moving through the, the trees. Allow yourself to get lost in music you enjoy, whether it's listening to an album on your headphones or playing the piano yourself. Music can incite feelings of connectedness, purpose, meaning, faith, and hope. Close your eyes and allow yourself to fully immerse in the listening experience. I know for my own reason, I love music and I play gospel music at home. You know, I'll dance, I'll, you know, I'll sing, you know, I'll just meditate whilst, while, um, doing this musical um, thing all the time. Sit with a piece of art. This could be a painting in a museum, a sculpture, a local park, or even a piece of colorful um, graffiti, anything that calls out to you. Ask yourself why you are drawn to this particular piece. Do you recognize something about yourself or some universal truth? The sixth one is be good to yourself. Boost positivity, the non-physical aspect of spirituality can make it feel as if it is a remote practice, separate from the rest of your life. But this isn't true. Spirituality, just like the other aspects of well-being, is profoundly influenced by other factors in your lifestyle. Exercise regularly and eating a nutrient-rich diet with lots of vegetables and fruits is one of reminding yourself that you care deeply about this life and this body. Paying attention to what you eat is important too. According to John um, Kabat-Zinn, practicing mindfulness, you know, mindful eating, allow you to drop right into the knowing in which that are effortlessly, totally natural, entirely beyond words and thinking. Such an exercise delivers work fully immediately mindful eating you know you don't have to eat like a big bowl of um uh, a big bowl of rice you can actually um take a portion of rice you know with 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 a small bowl and have it that's mindful eating make contemplate practice um a part of your everyday life the benefits of adopting a contemplate practice such as meditation prayer yoga journaling have widespread effects not just on spirituality but on physical and emotional health as well. Take yoga class, practice chair yoga at work, dedicate 15 minutes each day when writing a journal, listen to a guided audio meditation, join a spiritual community, such as a church, prayer group, meditation center, share, contemplate, experience with others. Eat mindfully, like I've said, Set aside time for prayer or reflection each day. It's so important. We have, we have a God that watches over us. So we need to actually spend time in prayer. Try a guided body scan. Watch a natural, um, natural guided relaxa uh, relaxation video. Forgiveness and meditation. This guided forgiveness practice has three steps. We begin with those whom we have um, caused harm intentionally or intentionally. Next, we turn our attention to those who have similar caused us harm intentionally or intentionally. And finally, we turn our attention to self-forgiveness for ways we may have harmed ourselves intentionally or intentionally. In conclusion today, uh, on my own part, Remember, your gifts can be used in many different ways. So don't feel like you have, do, you have to do something just because it looks on the surface and it's perfect for, the, for your gift. 
If an assignment isn't filling you with joy, find an opportunity that does. Joy is a great indicator of what your gift may be. If a tax makes you happy, that's a good sign you found your skill and feet. Now go and discover what gifts God has given you and make sure to use those gifts in this kingdom. It's so important that we know about this gift. It's so important um, that we, we realize, we get to know all about these resources that God has given us. And so today, um, I call on my guest speaker, Prophet Emmanuel, all the way from South Africa. Good afternoon, Prophet Emmanuel. If you can unmute yourself and join us today. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dr. Augusta, may the good Lord bless you. Amen. I thank God for this great opportunity that uh, God through you has allowed me to be part and parcel. So may God bless all our viewers today, those who are hearing us across global. Today, I will be also speaking about ability to utilize spiritual resources to solve problems. By the grace of the Lord, God has given every one of us giftings and many other resources in us, of which most of them, you have mentioned them. On this case, I would like to focus on what biblically the word of the Lord is saying. He spoke on the blood way about how we can be able to utilize our spiritual resources. And I will be very specific and stay on my lane and preach or teach what the Bible is saying. Amen to all. <laughs> all right. Now we should understand that problems are everywhere. And because problems are everywhere, we need to understand how we can handle every situations, problems, challenges that we go through in life. And before we are able to understand how to deal with problems, we need to also understand what is life? Because problems only exist for those who are still alive. If you are not alive, you wouldn't have anything to deal with. And therefore it is most necessary for us to understand life. Life, there is actually no any scientific definition for life. We can say so many things about life, but actually we don't have a true definition for life. So let's quickly go into the Bible and see if we will be able to give a brief definition of life. Um, let's turn our Bible to Genesis chapter number two, verse seven. I'm here with my pastor, Evangelist Rachel, who will be doing most of the reading for us. Genesis chapter two, verse number seven. Amen. Genesis chapter two, Verse 11. Verse King, 7. Verse 7. Yeah. King James. It reads as follows. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Bible says the Lord God, meaning the creator. The Lord God formed a man from the dust of this earth. So human beings are made of the dust, the things we see here on earth, meaning we are earthly. 
Number one, continue. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And then after God had to breathe the breath of life into our nostril. And the man became a living being. Before we were able to move, talk, speak, do the things that we are able to do. So men, biblically, are made with two components, which are very vital. We are fresh. We are from dust. We are from the earth. And at the same time, God breathed the breath of life into our nostril before we became a living soul. In another word, we are able to move, speak, think because of the breath of life. When God took the earth to form a man, we weren't able to do all this. We were able to do it after the breath of life has come onto us. And what is the breath of life, which is God's power in us, God's ability in us. In fact, that is God having his abode in a man. So a man should understand that you are not only physical being, but at the same time, you are therefore a spiritual being. So whatever problems that we encounter on earth, we need to understand that only with our intellect, our physical abilities can therefore not be able to solve the problems that we have or we go through. Unless we apply or we are able to utilize the spiritual intelligence which was given to us by God and which is God himself existing or having his abode in us. So today, I will focus on other three things that will be able to help us understand life in a better sense. One is life itself. Life it is one of the profound questions of human existence. And virtually, no one knows the answer or if. It does exist at all. So, because life doesn't really have a proper definition, it means that we are very dependent on the creator who brought us to life. And we have to also understand that the creator borrowed us with something that still belongs to him, which is himself, which is the breath of life. So whenever we approach any difficulty, any form of supernatural or natural problems, we need to understand that our very existence is by the creator. And therefore we depend on the creator for solutions. Anybody who ignore the creator, who do things beside the creator, will by no means get out of anything, any problems that we encounter. So many people fell in life not because they were meant to fail or they were created without hope or they were created to suffer or they were created to fail. But because of lack of acknowledging that our very existence is by the creator 
and he has followed us with his spirit, which is the power of God himself. So we depend solely upon God in order to be able to solve our problems. Number two, we have to also understand that we were made with a purpose. And this is what every humanity should understand. That anything that exists does exist by a purpose or for a purpose. So a man without a purpose will live and abuse the reason why you are alive. So understanding your purpose made life easy and understanding your purpose help you to overcome many challenges, difficulties that we go through daily as it comes. What is purpose? Purpose is simply the reason you were born. Why you were born. In the Bible, John 18, verse 37, Pilate said to Jesus, looking at the way you speak, I perceive that you are a king. And Jesus said, you are right. I am a king. For this purpose, I was made alive. For this purpose, I was sent into the universe. So beloved, there are many problems that are yet to be resolved and many problems that we are unable to resolve. It's simple because there are most people who are living without understanding their main purpose, who they are, what they were created to be, what is good for them and what not good for them. There are people who are only following life or living life based on what they see from others based on what they hear by the society. So everything goes, everything moves them, everything carries them, and they move by what they see, they hear, and what they are being told. That is why some people even fail because there are certain people who told them that you don't deserve to succeed. There are people who fail, not because they were made or meant to fail, but they believe that there are certain supernatural powers, either from family, from their environment, or where they live that is causing them to fail. Beloved, in fact, if you understand your purpose in life, it is not easy for just anything to destroy you or to cause you to fail. In the Bible or in the scriptures, there was a man I would like to make some few emphasis of him. His name is called Jeremiah, it came to a time Jeremiah's life became very difficult. He cried constantly and he was living in sorrow. So one day he decided to inquire from God that God, why is the righteous perish? Why do I have to go through difficult times? Why do I see all these persecutions? And God said, for I know the plans I have for you. My plans is not evil, but my plans is to give you an expected end, to give you good future. 
And the point is, the more you speak my word, the more I, the Lord, will protect you and praise my glory on you. Beloved, a man cannot operate outside your divine purpose and still succeed. And a man cannot come out of your circumstances, the encumbrances that surround you without understanding the very purpose that God sent you here to fulfill. Every man that is seen here on earth, you are here to fulfill a particular purpose. And one will ask, how will I know my purpose? You can only know your purpose when you are in good connection with the creator. Since life is inevitable and life cannot be predictable, that is why you have to apply spiritual intelligence by means of consulting your creator as daily as you wake up, as daily as the day breaks, as daily as you live, you need to consult your creator about your purpose. That God, what am I living for? Why did you create me? What do I have to fulfill? And once you understand this from your creator, you will be able to be conscious of life, how you live, how you talk, how you move, and how you go about things, which is very, very important. And from the purpose, you must also understand the third part, which is the principle. Now you know you have life because God gave it to you. Number two, you know that you are here to fulfill or achieve a particular purpose. And then number three is how, which is the principle. The key principle to fertilize life and overcome many problems that we are sometimes plunged into is to understand the principles that govern your life. The principle that govern my life will be quite different from the principle that governs your life because both of us are here to fulfill different purposes in accordance with the divine will. That is why it's necessary to know what is the purpose. That is why it is necessary to know what is the principle. Now, let's get to into the Bible once again to Matthew chapter 16, verse number 19. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. It reads as follows. Matthew 16, verse 19. Verse 19. It reads as follows. Bible says, I gave unto you the keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. In fact, this life are coded with, with particular keys. And that is why I said earlier that the keys to fertilize your life or the principles to fertilize your life 
will be quite different from your own child you have brought to life. From your own husband you have been living with. From the people you come across daily in your life. There are keys pertaining to life. And once you lose your keys or you lost your key, life will become difficult. Problems will fl be flooded over your life. You will live your life with uncertainty, uncertainties. You won't understand which direction to go, which direction to find rest, which direction to find peace, and how you can make it to life. Jesus said, I have given you the keys, the keys of the kingdom. This world is kingdom. That is why we have kings on this earth. That is why we have rulers on this earth. That is why we have head in every family. That is why we have head in every office, every company. It is a kingdom and kingdom uses keys. So when Jesus was speaking to Peter, he said, I have given you the church. Be the head of the church. And because you are going to manage your life and manage people and manage the world, I give you keys. Beloved, what is your key in your life? I'll give you some few examples of the keys so that you will be able to apply them, utilize them with the spiritual intelligence so that you will be able to avoid many problems. There are problems you have to avoid them and there are problems you, need, you have to conquer them and there are problems you have to manage them. Sometimes Christians do get confused because we want to overcome every problem. Some problems are meant to manage. For example, if you have a stubborn child who doesn't listen to you, you cannot cut your child completely from your life. As long as you live, the only option you have is to pray. But God has given every man his personal will. And every man has a control on what to do with their will, what to believe and what not to believe. So as a parent having a child who doesn't listen, there is nothing you can do. You just have to manage them. It becomes a lifetime problem until one day God has visited them. You will have to manage them. Having a very difficult job, sometimes once you quit, your life will become meaningless and therefore you got to manage it. No matter how challenging it is, no matter how difficult it is, you have to manage it. So some problems are made to manage. There was a time Apostle Paul made a very sharp statement. It is quite interesting. Apostle Paul said, God has allowed Satan to give me a buffet, a blow, a tone in my flesh. Three times I have cried unto God and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Sometimes beloved, there are certain chronic problems that you have been dealing with. All that you need is to ask God's grace to manage them. And some problems you are born to overcome. 
David said, as he stood in front of Goliath, he said, he quote, when I was in the wilderness, I was tending for my father's flocks. And as I was there, this were part of my experience. There were lions and the bears that come to eat my frogs. I ran after them, catch them, and destroy them. Some of them I have to open their mouth and take back my sheep. Some problems are made to overcome. There was another time David had opportunity to meet Goliath. Meeting Goliath was an opportunity for David. But there were kings and many people who met Goliath and they were shattered. They were crying. Why? Because they did not understand the power of facing your fears. Some problems will intimidate you. Some problem will detain you. Some problem will make you fall on your knees. And some problem obviously will make you cry in the night. Can I hear your amen? Oh, just give a bountiful uh, a smile. Hallelujah. <laughs> Great. So David wasn't terrified, even though the situation demands. The king saw it down on his knees. His soldiers were down and all Israel was shattered. But David stood on his ground and said, this problem is meant to overcome. Why? Because if I do not overcome this problem, it shall become a chronic problem for our generation. Beloved, I challenge you today, irrespective of whatever you are going through, God has given you power to conquer the conqueror. God has given you power to intimidate your intimidators. God has given you power to break every change. Bible says, behold, I gave unto you power to trample over scorpion, witches and wizards and nothing shall by any means will hurt you. Bible says the anointing shall break the yokes. Beloved, because of the God's spirit in you, God's presence upon you, God's power that is in you, it was given to you because of such a time like this. The encumbrances that have surrounded you, the challenges that have surrounded you, God wants you to use your spiritual intelligence, your spiritual resources, the available tools that he has provided in you to conquer your conquerors to defeat every problem that comes into your way. Because some problems, if you don't deal with them, it will become a traditional problem and it will live in your family for good. Let me give you an example of King Saul when God has sent him to go to Amaritans and utterly, totally destroy them. Bible says because he had a good relationship with the king, the king of, um, with the king of Amaritans. So he saved him. And as he saved the king, this very king that he saved was the same king whose descendants by name Haman, Haman, come from the root of Amaris, Amaritans. And he is a direct relative to the king of Amaric. In Esther chapter three going, it was the same Haman that was 
able to capture the entire Jewish, the entire Israel, in attempt to totally eradicate them. Beloved, there are certain problems. If you don't apply your spiritual intelligence and master courage to overcome them, you postpone it and it becomes a generational problem. Today, I speak to you as a prophet of God and I declare upon your life that you shall not fail. No matter what you are going through, regardless of who controls it, regardless of who is behind it, regardless of how long it has been existed in the family, today you are going to apply your spiritual intelligence and overcome them. Because it is meant to be overcome. That is why Bible says you are more than a conqueror. Meaning there are conquerors before you were born. Certain, certain people have capitalized upon certain territories in your life. Certain people have overcome certain portions in the family. There are certain families, women will have children, no husbands. Women will have children and lose all of them. Women will have children and bury their children. Women will never have money. Women will have money and have no children. Men will have money and have no wives. Men will have money and have no peace. Listen, these things are common in many families. And every family has got something to deal with. That is why it is necessary for God to make you more than that conqueror. So there is no need to be feared. There is no need to be afraid. God knows all things before you were made here on earth. So That's God right. sent you for a purpose. Right. And therefore you cannot afford to lose this battle at all. You cannot afford to be shattered. You cannot afford to give up. That vision you have, you can't afford to give up. And regardless of the challenges, the circumstances that surround some, because God has made you more than a conqueror. Can I hear your voice saying, I am more than a conqueror? I am more than a conqueror, definitely. You are not I'm a conqueror. more than a conqueror. But than a you conqueror. are more than a conqueror. That means there are a lot of conquerors that are working around. <laughs> there are a lot of conquerors in that family. There are a lot of conquerors in that work, that business, that job, wherever you go, wherever you stand, wherever you stand, there are conquerors. That's why the Bible says, do not be afraid. Greater is he that is in you than he that is around you. Greater is he that is in you than that which that you are afraid, than that enemy who doesn't like you. That is why David heard all this news and he must have covered and said, I am walking through the shadows of death, but I shall fear no evil because thou art with me. Beloved, God is with you. From creation, he has been with you. He breathed into you the breath of life, which is the power of God. And God himself is with you. That is why there is no point to be afraid. That is why there is no point to give up. These are one of the principles. So we can just. It is one up. of the key. Well, yes, um, because of the, of the timing. It's one of the key. Yeah. And then the second key is direction. We need direction in life, beloved. Regardless of our certificate, our knowledge, and our understanding, there are certain things that go beyond our control, that goes beyond our understanding. That is why knowledge has no end. We need direction in life. 
Bible says I will direct you the way you should go. And the children that were living beside Jordan, they went to the men of God in, 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 in 2 Kings chapter 2. They inquired from him and said, the city where we live is beautiful, but the water there is bitter and the land is very unproductive. Today, I pronounce you productive. It doesn't matter how long you have been fruitless. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, may you be productive as from today. As you apply the spiritual intelligence, as you utilize the great resources that God has deposited in you, the keys that God has entrusted in your curve, I pray for you that you will be able Amen. to be successful and also achieve your dreams. And the last but not the least is designing. Designing is very important to be able to overcome many problems. You have to see, you need to see. And there are several ways that God revealed himself through us and in us. We have to be conscious on how God communicate with us. Designing is important. The Zenin is either a gift or it is a, either a gift or spirit. That is your ability to understand God's ways of doing things. It is the Zenin, number one. The Zenin is God's ability for you to understand his ways. Yeah. Number two is your ability to see through people, people that are around you. It's not everybody that has to come close to your doors. That has to be around you. That has to know more about you. Love people from distance. And some people, you love them from within. And some people, you have to love them from closet. So, designing made life easy, free of many problems. And then, uh, designing will also make you understand the situation you are going through, the situation that surround you, and the meaning of them, which is Matthew 2, verse number, uh, 10 and 12. To bring my message to a conclusion, there were these wise men who visited Jesus when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the sheep. Do you know what happened? They saw the sign. As from today, may you begin to see the sign. The sign to discover your way forward. And as you constantly apply this supernatural intellectual principle, may you overcome every situation, every circumstances that come on your way. May the good Lord bless you, empower you, and may he strengthen you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a great, uh, you know, impactful um, word from you there, um, Prophet Emmanuel, all the way from um, South Africa. Um, you know, it's um, it's a pleasure of having you here today, and um, you talk a lot um, about our abilities um, that we are born with and really change, really. So uh, they are Im uh, immeasurable abilities from God, you know, that you That's said. It. Yeah, they make each of us uh, different from one another. And it's That's so important it. that we follow this path because um, I cannot just say, oh, I want to be an athletic. Do I have the um, capacity to be that? Do I have the passion to be an athletic, I, you know? It's not my thing and it's not my giving purpose and it's not something I'm passionate about. You know, there are things that we cannot just follow. You know, everybody says, oh, because this lady is doing, um, she's an athletic. I want to be an athletic as well, you know, because um, this lady um, is a seamstress. I want to be a seamstress as well. So we have to look at all of these things, you know, which is very, very important in life. Um, you know, you've, you've highlighted our purpose, you know, you highlighted about um, how we depend on God on, to solve all our problems, which is very true, because without God, we are nothing in this world, you know, we depend on him on everything, really. 
So, you know, you've, you've, you've stuck about um, to understand your purpose in life, which is very, very important. You know, it's, it's so much so that um, um, some scientists um, have criticized Gardner's theory, um, challenging that um, there are not different types of intelligence. So, but abilities and talent, people have um, musical um, talent, they have intellectual talent, they have um, 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 special visual talent and verbal intelligence, is for, um, for example. So whether um, they are intelligence or abilities, God, is, God placed them in each of us at bat. So he used them, yes. He used them in us and gives us these abilities. And we are, um, we can use this, uh, you can, we can use them for his glory. We can use these abilities to help others as well. We understand what graphs in it. We understand how things work in this. So God uses our talents as well. The spirit takes these abilities, uh, our intelligence that God gave us um, naturally and um, set them out on fire. He uses them in his church, in, power, in powerful ways. He takes the musical abilities we have and empower us to lead and minister in worship. So there are different things that you've just, you know, you've just mentioned <coughs> about, 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 about all these spiritual uh, resources that we can, the ability to use them in a better way. And we just have like two minutes to, um, to get um, uh, any questions from um, anyone here. Does anybody want to ask any questions? Does anybody want to ask any questions? Please put your hand up. Because we are almost running out of time so we can um, be, bring this um, to a close for today. Okay. Yes, um, Prophet Emmanuel, I've just got one question um, to ask you. Um, okay. Um, doing this, um, finding our, um, you, you, uh, how, in utilizing our spiritual uh, purpose, really. Um, some people don't believe in prayers. They think they can just, um, they think they can just do, they can just, within their own free will, they can just go and, and get what they want because of their ability to do things. So how do you address things like that? Actually, it's a good question. It was part of my points, but due to the, the time, yeah. I had to shorten it. Okay. A prayer actually is defined biblically as communion with God. Communion, another word, is to fellowship with God. So now, if we obtain our life from the, the life giver, which is God, then what actually can we achieve without him? And how do we achieve them without letting him know what we desire or what we want? So prayer, prayerlessness life, is same as a choice of failure because someone gave you that life. And if you don't communicate with him automatically, since life is unpredictable, you are going to fall in the pit, one of the pit holes. So I recommend prayer because it helps you constantly to reveal or to inter interact or interchange um, desires, decisions, and um, our request from God. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, you've answered my question. So Islam play? Yeah. Islam play, Christian pray, Buddhist pray. Yes. And every spiritual person believes in prayer. So we can't actually neutralize ourselves when we don't pray. This it is so important. And um, um, 
I know that the power of um, your um, abilities as well and talents is just the start. Um, as you grow um, in your abilities, learning how to use them more effectively, um, um, the Holy Spirit and Christian um, knows exactly how, um, how he wants to add his purpose in your abilities and talents. So when you work with your talents um, for Jesus uh, kingdom, for example, the Holy Spirit gives you uh, even more ability and understanding of your talents. So he may, he may plant ideas in views of how to use your talents for the church or for different things, for different purpose for, for your community and, you know, et cetera. So it's so important that we, you know, we learn to use the skills, we learn to use, to utilize um, the spiritual intelligence um, in our daily day um, lives and how to um, help others as well, because we not only uh, helping ourselves, but we're helping others. And so today I bring um, a closure to this um, academy. It's been a wonderful day. Um, it's been um, a great topic um, there um, that we have discussed um, these um, issues on our ability to, um, to challenge um, these resources as well. So um, I'll bring it to a close. And I'm um, wishing you all um, a fantastic day, wishing you all a lovely Monday. And thank you all for joining in today. And I would like to say thanks to all um, people here present that have joined in today. And um, I would like to um, just, just um, go back and um, on my first, um, my last slide saying that remember that your gifts can be used in many different ways. So don't mm -hmm. feel that you have to do something just because it looks on the surface as it's, as it's perfect for your gift. If an assignment isn't filling you with joy, find an opportunity that does. Joy is a great indicator of what your gifts may be. If a tax makes you happy, that's good. Sign, you found your skill and fit. Now go and discover what gift God has given you and make sure to use that, those gifts in the kingdom. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless, God bless you. you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so God much for coming, you. guys. Thank you so much. Thank God you, Professor, you. for such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful insight. And uh, we are looking forward for new, new things every time from you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're most welcome. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.